person. Okay, somebody's saying there's no sound. Okay, let's just make sure, Ray, if you can hear us, um, raise your hand if you can hear us now. Okay, yay, everybody can hear. Um, all right, now I am going to share my screen. And we are cooking with gas. So as I said, we are super excited about tonight's last Tuesday, mainly because it is a great segue into a certification class. Um, if any of you have had our classes on the DSA, you know that um, we try and make them go so thorough, have systems, have formulas. So we would have students say, you know, gosh, I feel like I need a refresher on bookcases or you know, I love walking into a room and, and using my creative skills until I see a bookcase. So um, this led to a certified um, class in bookcases. So you can become a bookcase specialist. So what we did tonight was um, we would love to have done it all, except that it's long. I mean, it's like seven modules. It's very in-depth. We thought we'd give you a sampling of it. Um, give you education throughout it, but also let you know and see a little bit um, about what the class is all about. And then kind of, I want you to text um, throughout the night. Um, do you love bookcases? Um, just, you know, just anything about bookcases. It's all about bookcases tonight. So like oh, I said, where I went, Sandra, am I there? Yeah, you're here. I don't see me. I do. You're there. Oh, well, what if I stick my tongue out? I can't see if I see. <laughs> I'm trying to do side by side and put myself on here. Um, okay, I'm just okay. going to have to believe. No, no, if anybody wants to do that, or if you want to be seen tonight, hey, we're happy to um, let everybody be seen at the end of this. At the very top of your um, show my screen where you see me, there is a black bar and there's one dash, a solid dash, and then two dashes. If you hit the two dash, then it will show you and me. Okay. Oh, Since and it did. So y'all want to jump in? <laughs> so let's get going. <laughs> okay. I digress. Okay. 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 So first of all, like I said, students beg for this. Um, and even professionals wanted a deeper dive into it. And I told the story the other day, I have a super talented peer and we would work together on some projects and we would walk in to a space and if she saw a china cabinet, a break front, um, a bookcase, a niche, you know, anything, she would go, I'll do anything you want me to do. Just don't make me do that bookcase. <laughs> and I'm like, you were good at bookcases. She goes, I just hate bookcases. I just don't feel confident. So that, I mean, she was incredibly talented and a professional. So we, in doing all the research that we love to do with these things, we have come up with formulas because you know that takes the guesswork out of it it is makes it a very systematic approach we always say it's your client is likes country um traditional ultra modern um eclectic you know bohemian chic whatever it might be following our systematic approach to the room you can't screw it up i mean that's the beauty of these formulas so we've got we're going to give you some formulas tonight um Basically, it's a logical service to add on um, if you are already, you know, doing anything decorating or staging mind minded. And I love what Carol said about it's also an alternative, you know, as, as you were getting a little bit older, she said, I didn't, you know, speak out of turn, but I mean, it's, we're not moving a sofa, we're lifting books, you know, kind of thing. Um, so, um, and let's face it, in, in putting the um, certified class together, guys, I am shocked how many ugly bookcases there are out there. And not only that, some of them are in magazines. I mean, you know, decorating <laughs> magazines. And I was like, because, you know, we love to give credit if we know who did the magazine. And I'm like, I'm using, we're using this as a what not to do. I don't know if we should, if they want us to give credit, but I mean, so there's a lot of um, 
bookcases out there, there's a lot of bookcases that are screaming for your help. So, um, so therefore, there's money in their heels. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. when you think about it like that. Absolutely. I'm going to monitor this question right here, Carol, while you. Um... Okay. Well, if you want to become a bookcase specialist, this is a great entry into the design industry. There may be some of you on this webinar tonight that have not launched or you are about to launch or you uh, took your class maybe a year ago, but you still just can't do get out there. This is a great way to tip your toe in the water. And, you know, that's what we say about seasonal. It's only in certain times of the year. Therefore, it makes it so much not as so much not so mysterious as trying to take on a whole room. In those of you that are in this industry, it's a great new revenue stream. And then some of you are just looking for a deeper education. Maybe you're like Sandra's uh, associate that, you know, make me do anything but the bookcase. You know, she's good at everything she does, but don't make me do the bookcase. And it's just always been, some people are like that about color. You know, it's like, oh, just don't ask me to pick a color, you know. And accessories in general have always been something that has a tendency to, to trip some of us up. So it's a quick turnaround. You could generally go in and do a bookcase in a half a day, a day, a couple of hours, whatever. And it gives instant gratification. But while you're there working on the bookcase, you are building that know, like, and trust concept that goes with, you know, okay, she did such a beautiful job on my bookcase. Can you do the rest of the room? You know, so now you just get moved into the next phase, whether you want to or not. <laughs> so it's well, unique and it's specialized. And, you know, that reminds me, Carol, one of my first clients, um, beautiful home, probably about, you know, five million, gorgeous home. And I walk in and I truly did look at her room. She had the most gorgeous drapes. It's like I just, I was coveting her drapes. But anyway, she had gorgeous drapes. She had gorgeous artwork, um, beautiful furniture. Um, the room was really very appealing. And I really thought, why has she brought me here? And, but we had a great time. We just um, bounced ideas off. She really brought me there for ideas. But at the end, she said, I love my furniture placement. I love everything about my room, but I want some changes. And she said, I want to start with my bookcase. And I thought, and that's why we kind of put that no like, and trust. I mean, she was liking me enough to kind of keep me there and about ask me more questions, but it was the bookcase that got me in the door and it got me staying in the door. And what we did was every season we updated, gave her a fresh look with her bookcases and her um, case goods, any of the hard surface. She said, you free game for the hard surfaces in here just I like my furniture I'm like okay so and she was a great reference you know she just referred me you know all the time um so Carol you want to start first sure so okay we thought we'd start at the very beginning what is a bookcase <laughs> well it's actually just anything that holds shelves it can be the shelves themselves they can be any kind of surface that is going to be used for display or books that can be tall, they can be short. Any of those things can denote a bookcase. So when I walked around my house after, you know, I'm thinking, okay, a niche, I have two of those. I've got, I probably have more built-ins in this house than normal. I mean, I've got three surfaces to, that fall into this category in my living room. So when I start to do that and you guys start to look at your clients' spaces in light of potential revenue, every shelf is potential revenue, it really does start to add up. So a bookcase can be, you know, freestanding or it's built in, attached to the wall or not, tall, short, flanking a focal point, is the focal point floating 
you know, sometimes a bookcase is actually located behind the, you know, so it's floating somewhere. They're wood, glass, uniquely shaped. They can be free of books where they're, I remember I went to a client's house and there were eight of them and they were all black and glass and it was just stuff. There were no books in it. It was just stuff. <laughs> Lots of little bitty stuff, as a matter of fact. Anyway, it's uniquely shaped. Uh, books only. We get that a lot. Functional, a showcase, and uh, are light and uncluttered. So it can be any type of bookcase. You know, that's a good point about not having any books on it. I mean, basically, then, you know, it's like a display shelf. I mean, that's maybe, you know, that falls into that category too. And I mean, think about the floating shelves, open shelving in kitchens right now. I mean, those really require our styling. I can't tell you how many of those that we saw that it was like, oh, let's just begone this thing up with some, you know, plates that are not. Dirty pans. <laughs> <laughs> Please. So that's where when you start to think of, you know, we say this with seasonal de decorating, it's not just about Christmas, but when you start to think of all the potential opportunities to decorate or to um, make money, it, there's more than just one. And that's kind of what started to fall into place with us with the bookcases. So first of all, we need to decide what is the main purpose of this bookcase? Is it for this client? What it's all about the client, what they like, their needs, um, their function, however it's structured, or is it for selling? And we know right off the bat, and if you're a stager on here, um, that's probably the first thing we do besides wanna empty the whole thing off. It's like, okay, how can we edit slash declutter this bookcase because we don't want to take away from what we're selling. You know, we're selling, you know, views, um, square footage and architectural detail. And a, a lot of these bookcases, when you think about them, the built-ins, they are architectural features. I mean, like you can tell my bookcase behind me is all about dwelling. Um, it's all about function. Um, it's some personal things that I like, but it's, if I was staging my house and getting ready to sell it, I would, I would do the same thing I'm saying. I would have to start editing that so that it started to feel like, oh, look, what a nice book clay, uh, bookshelf that we have back here. So that's one of the first things that you want to remind yourself. So I am just I really just am started, I feel like I'm on a mission just to remind everybody about design principles and how to incorporate them in every aspect. You know, whether it's a redesign and you're using what, they're, what they have, it's respecting those design principles and it just ensures your success too. You know, we have the, you know, our steps to emptying the room and, and that part of the system, but a lot of this is logical to us with our eye. You can walk in and you can say, gosh, that's a cluttered bookcase. Or gosh, look at that, you know, all the little tchotchke things. You know, it's, it's never one snow baby. It's, you know, 200, you know, on that <laughs> bookcase. So we really want to remind everybody about the design principles, the basic ones in relationship to bookcases. So let's start with scale and proportion. And I have to say, I have started using this terminology um, more and more, even with my clients, because they don't know what the design principles are, but they're just so impressed I do. And, and just like when we talk about in the color class, you know, um, the harmony or the desaturation or the saturation or the value, and uh, they're like, mm, that, sounds, <laughs> that sounds good. I don't know. Just want my ring to worry. Say that one more time, Carol. I said, that sounds important. It does. And so that's, I want you to kind of think about that too, when you're um, addressing and styling bookcases. So first, first, let's talk about scale and proportion. This was a really good example. So not only do we want the items that we put in on that shelf 
to be relatable to each other, you know, be, um, have that common ground. Um, we also want it to be relatable in size and scale to the actual space. And in this case, let's look at this shelf. This is the size of the shelf. This um, rattaned element in the back is really good scale to the actual space that we're trying to fill because it's breathable. I always say, can we have some white space or open space in all of our designs, even in our rooms, we have, you know, that's why we worry about traffic. That's why we worry about, you know, art placement. So same thing goes for our bookshelves. In this case, this is really nice because I have breathable room. I have this filling up a nice proportion of it. The stacking of the books brought this vase a little bit higher, even the relationship between the two on the right hand side. So think about what you're putting in and how it relates to each other. And I want you to think about how it relates to the space. I mean, I know you guys have seen the ones where it's like just crammed in there. I'm really going to make this rattan thing fit if I have to bend it over <laughs> to cram it in there. So that's what we want you to start really focusing on and it'll help you select what goes hey in. Hey guys, is Sandra, is Sandra breaking up to anybody else? Okay, hold just a second. You were too just a little bit. Um, no, I get a no. We're good. Oh, Carol's not. Um, okay. I'm back. Okay, good. Um, let's see. Um, I think Sandra... Wick had her hand up. Just give us one second. Oops, hold and on. And Sandra, you were breaking up just a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, I think we may, it's that, you know, we need to think about this now when everybody's on the internet, they, you know, gotten, you know, kids are off school, now they're playing, whatever. Um, hopefully everybody can hear me and let me just make sure I have one question. Um, okay, Sandra said I was breaking up some to her too. Okay, so hopefully that'll just level out a little bit. Um, we'll just rotate this back and forth. Okay, so let's keep going. So let's talk about color. So what happens a lot of time when we are working in bookcases, it's you use what a homeowner has. And we're looking at what we've emptied off that shelf and we're looking at this floor and we're like, okay, it doesn't look much better down here than it did up there. <laughs> so, but your job is to look at the overall space and what are the colors that need to be in that bookcase? How can you represent them? We want that color represented at least three times as we say this in the room too, but it needs to follow that color harmony. What is working in that space? So we really wanna think about how we can incorporate that. So color is the next dis, um, um, design principle we're talking about. Next is texture. We obviously think about greenery or um, a plant or something that's leather, that exterior, but even our backdrops can provide that textural feel to our bookcases. So think about texture. And, and again, this is a nice variety that you're trying to put in the cases. Um, next, light. Obviously, we would love it if we have an outlet and we can bring in a light source at some point. Um, we also can bring that in with candles. Now, we used to say, don't do something that's not logical. Well, now battery-operated candles are so in. So not only that, the finish, the contrast, like a metallic um, finish on an apple or a pear or something, can also reflect light. Mirrors can reflect light. So think about the light that you can bring in. And then last but not least, we wanna talk about the line shape and form that are you are introducing into this bookcase. So in this case, notice I'm gonna move, can you guys see that? I just wanna make sure that is not in your way. No, we can't see anything. I can see line shape and... Okay, good. Um, so what you wanna do is, this is a good example how the shape, we've got a circular shape with the planter, the, it's holding the plant, 
We've also now got this texture. The rattan is providing us a little texture. This piece is really giving us a nice variety with just the shape of the um, lines. But it's great because we have linear, we have the, our circles and our curves. And think about it, most bookcases are bringing you a linear overload to start with. We've got the vertical lines, we've got the shelves. So it is imperative that you break up that linear overload with what you're bringing into the space. So this is one of our questions. We just picked this one because this um, can, you know, help you and give you some ideas. We all have that client consultation and hopefully you have tweaked it for what service that you're offering. So in this case, there's no reason to go in here and ask a client in a client consultation, you know, when are you pl planning to put your house on the market unless you know it is for selling. But, but we do want to know what style that they are drawn to. And we also want to know what they're shooting for for this bookcase. I mean, occasionally um, you might have a client and you can almost tell, I always say if, if I've seen the client a couple of times and it's always khakis and a white shirt, I know she's more than likely going to lean towards the bookcase style on the left. If it's somebody that's always in bright colors, you know, they will probably be going to the right or um, there are more is more kind of person. That's okay. But we, these were just, um, this is just a question that will help you zero in on what your client is hoping for their bookcase. Also, you want to ask questions that are going to give you some insight. Like she may be in the khakis and white shirt every time you see her, but she wants a change. And that's why she's hiring you. She may feel comfortable doing the one on the left by herself, but no, Senator, I need you to give me like the one in the middle. So your questionnaire is so powerful for giving you insight to your client because you do not want to make assumptions. We talk about that, you know, any way that you can have clarity um, is great. If you have that client and Carol's sister, we'll let her tell you about that in a minute, is one of them where she likes the groupings by author or chronological or sub, you know, collections, then she might be talking about the one on the right. So this is just a way we want to encourage you to tweak your, your consultation, your forms to meet the need. Okay, so let's talk about color evaluation. And, and then Carol, I'm gonna let you talk. <laughs> so, um, so, so, so just let's go back just one second. When you look at these bookcases, this is a color. This is going to have some influence to what you select to put in there. You need to know what is staying in that space. Um, it could be, you know, how many um, pictures did we bump into, Carol, that were, you know, oak. Um, oh, I know. And but well. that's, yeah, if that's what you have and, and very few people want to paint theirs, um, that's what you have. So you need to know what are the colors that are staying? Um, you know, what about the backdrop? Um, is that something that you can have some input in? And if the backdrop is different already, then, you know, you need to make sure you understand and evaluate that color. And then you may have emptied everything and looked at this bookcase. And then all of a sudden your homeowner says, oh, but I got this really cool piece of art on my last trip and I wanna incorporate it. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's going to influence the color evaluation. <coughs> okay. So as we look at this bookshelf, okay, what would you think this would be this is a uh strong blue strong white so it would basically be a high contrast bookcase i would think okay but i can tell by the objects that it is down by the seaside you know because it's got all these shells and things that are displayed in it and uh so that's what this bookcase is saying to me and so we look at this bookcase and over here, it, the strong color, I would say that this is kind of, un, you know, 
high contrast bookcase, but yet a lot of the things in it are neutral. Just like if I look at the painting uh, next to it or the print next to it, now that's got a strong color. There is no strong color in the bookcase itself, but just the bookcase, the paint of the bookcase and the backdrop of the bookcase tells me it's high contrast. Good answer. <laughs> Okay, so now some of the things you're going to find in module two, these were just, we were just kind of giving you a sampling of what you can learn here, is uh, in module two, we're going to talk about the design steps themselves. So here we go. All right. So the first thing you're going to do, just like we empty a room when we are decorating it so that we can actually see the room itself, we are going to empty the bookcase. And when we start emptying, we're assuming it's like the bookshelf on the right a minute ago, which had a lot of books. So I'm gonna put all the hardbacks together. I'm gonna put all the paperbacks together. I'm gonna to put the catalogs together, the picture albums together, because a picture album has a funky shape. You know, it's kind of like a you're trying to line up notebooks that don't wanna line up right. And then textbooks, encyclopedias. Um, then I'm gonna drill down a little bit more. I'm gonna go for sizes and shapes and colors, but I'm always paying attention to client direction. What I always say is, tell me about your bookcases. And that's when she's gonna say, oh, I always keep my authors together. Or, or she might just say, I just want a pretty bookcase. And it's like, oh, okay, I can that I can do. So. Or maybe I want all of my, you know, Harry Potters together or whatever. So I'm going to follow the client direction, but I am going to start sorting and separating. Okay, then I'm going to review the inventory and I'm going to look for any color harmonies. I'm going to go back to my client questionnaire. And then I'm gonna, now I'm gonna start looking at my bookcase structure itself. So I'm looking at inventory potential elements. What have I got to deal with? Do I have electronics I've got to deal with? Do I need to pull in a lot of organizational items because I've got a lot of floppy magazines or periodicals? What am I going to need to do to supplement? So we are including, uh, I think that might be the next one, Sandra. Nope. Nope, it's not the next. Go back to that. We're including for you. You know, it says books and it's got a number. Accessories, it's got a number. So if you're sitting there looking at that bookcase and I can, I mean, now that I've been doing it as many years as I have, I can look at it and go, I'm going to need at least two good sized pieces of art. I'm going to need, I want definitely light on this side, perhaps on that side. Let me see if I've got, you know, um, a, a plug. I'm going to need a ton of organizational items and I'll explain that to you in one of our pictures coming up. There's no life in this um, bookcase at all and uh, and virtually no color. So and and we need a little color. So then I'll look at the books and see if they can provide that for me. So I'm sort of making myself a mental list, but you're going to get this exact in a bigger form in the uh, certification class. And you know what's nice too, some of it is this helps you out because it gives you an inventory. Of course, you've snapped pictures throughout some of this, but but it is so impressive. The first time, you know, using something like this and the client walks in, it's like, wow, this, okay, this, we're getting, <laughs> this is professional. So that is not only did the forms make you look professional and you are, but it gives you this resource, you know, for you to have that clarity that you need. Exactly. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate the bookcase structure. In other words, um, the integrity of the bookcase. Is it movable? And if it's movable and they've got three children under five, does it need to be anchored? Because you know how little folks love to climb shelves. <laughs> and is it in good condition? So those are the things that come next. I'm, I'm ready to explore that because this also tells me, am I gonna be able to do this by myself? Are we gonna need a handyman? What are we gonna need besides me if the integrity of the bookcase 
is lacking. So then I'm going to look to see if I can reposition any of the shelves. Uh, I'm going to remove vertical and horizontal. Okay, I think, Carol, are you there? Can you guys hear Carol or is it? I'm losing connection. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. Okay, you're back. Okay. Okay. Ahead. Notice, I mean, uh, Sandra, can you show us that shelf underneath that big wood piece? Oh, Do you see on, that okay. shelf is thicker? Hang on. And what I've done is I took the shelf out. Huh? You see what I'm talking about, Sandra? Mm-hmm. Like I'm moving it. So I've lost Sandra. Okay. Oh. Well, what I did is I took the shelf above it and I put them together so that you can, you actually see that it creates a thicker shelf down below. Okay. If I can't put them there. I'm back. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, this is fun. I'm back, Sandra. Okay. Okay. I put it under the client's bed or something like that. And so, but you mostly, you want to protect any unused shelf so they don't get scratched. Okay, next slide. Okay, and I wanna make sure you saw where I was pointing um, for the shelving. So you can stack okay. them there. Yeah, now I see it. I didn't see it before, but that's okay. And I do like to, if there's nowhere to hide them logically, like, you know, like Carol did right here, I do like to put them underneath a bed. That's one of my options if I have nothing else upside down. So at least I know that the top of the shelf is protected on the carpet. Um, so that's another option. So now you're ready to start styling. You're ready to take out your formula and your design principles and your eye. Remember, you may need to gather sort of doing some house shopping for some additional inventory. So you know how we love to do that, you know, explore the house. Okay, so next, Sandra's going to ex tell you a little bit about, <laughs> doesn't this look interesting, uh, for all of the, the things that you can do with possibilities of a formula. So, I mean, we go into great depth in the certification class, but Sandra, <laughs> I'll a little bit to you now. So hit it, Sandra. Okay, so right off the bat, let me ask you and please type in here, or why don't you raise your hand? I think I might can see that easier. Raise your hand if you have had or taken any of our classes and you're familiar with the, the V, the X, and the Z formula for a bookcase. Just raise your hand right now. Okay, look at all these hands going up. Okay. I can't uh, see. Okay, that's good. All right. Um, I'm actually, gosh, I'm sorry. That is not good because I had to scroll down. So there's really only four of you. All right. Well, we had to pick and choose a little bit what we could talk on tonight. I kind of thought um, some of you may have known this for, but let me just kind of hit the highlights. Um, Technically, we could say there are seven formulas to cover in the class if you counted each letter, you know, the X, the V, and the Z, but we're grouping those together tonight. So that is the first rule, and that is when, and we'll, as we go forward, we'll point out um, some of those to you. That is where the whole arrangement of the bookcase, if you're looking straight on at it, that you're able to see an X the V or the Z, and it would be where your eye is tracking. Your eye is tracking movement. You know, a lot of times you see zigzag formula, um, formats in a bookcase. I think that's pretty popular, especially when you have somebody who does not um, need a lot of stuff in there. Um, so that's where your arrangements are going to actually form those shapes. A lot of times with an X, you'll have a TV or a large element in the middle. Um, and the same thing with a V, you could have that television at the lower, it could be a regular V or an inverted V. 
So next, we're going to talk about an, a fourth ratio for arranging your bookcases. And that would be the one that you see right here. So this is where if I said to you, if you walked in a room and you're like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? Um, I, I need to put this stuff in here or the client has given you some indication of what they want. Uh, we want you to stand back after you have started with that main one, that main focal point, and then stand back as you are building out and say, you know, do I have at the end of this a fourth open space? If you don't have a fourth open space, it's really not as breathable as desirable. You just need to have less in some areas. Um, it's, it's kind of like I showed you in the design principle slide. You know, we had some breathable room based on the size of the elements that got put in there. Um, having a fourth amount of the space with books and books can be accessories. You know, you can turn them backwards, you know, have the unique way you place them. Um, have a fourth of small objects. That can be, you know, those little, um, as Carol likes to say, the, the pieces that you might nudge in there some. And then you would want a fourth of the elements being the medium to the large objects. Um, depending on your consultation, there is also more of a frame effect. I'm going to just go to the one on the right just to make sure we have time because I know that's going to be what everybody is going to want to know about. Let's make sure I... Um, okay, next, let's talk about just triangles. Um, triangles in a bookcase is really and truly accomplished when you're able to give a variety of heights and a variety of interests, forward, backwards, north, south, east, west type thing. So that those triangles are made pretty <laughs> easily if you are following the systems of accessorizing. The other thing is on the right, this is what we called inverse geometry. <laughs> Carol was not going to let me let her do this one, but anyway. No, 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 say that a sausage <laughs> triangle. <laughs> I know. So, um, so I mean, first, we do it, but it's so nice to give it names now. So, well, and it is kind of logical. Like I said, when you think about a triangle in general, that means you have a tall, you've got medium and you've got shorter heights. So we already are starting to farm triangles with that. I mean, think about this. This could be a stack of books, a little um, section laying, um, laying down and an object on top. You have created a triangle effect. So what we're talking about on the right is basically, and again, you don't have to follow every one of these and put those in your arrangement. But if you had an equilateral triangle, that means that all of these sides are equal, but that might mean that you have um, a taller object in the middle, you might have a medium size object on each side, and you have formed using these two triangles, I mean, excuse me, these two shelves, an equilateral triangle. So then you go to shelf number three and you have this isosceles triangle. And what that means is these two sides are equal, my math teacher would be so excited. These two sides are equal. And this, of course, is not. But this could be easily accomplished with your arrangements, too. And you could, you know, put a little greenery in here. Um, you could put a candle on this in. But it is a triangle in itself, but a different shape. And again, that's going to give you variety. And notice now I have plenty of open space still. Now, on this shelf, you would incorporate two right angles. So this is, again, we just talked about this as a right angle too. This gives you, oh, you know, it's not an overload of the same shape of triangle in itself. And then again, you can um, finish it off with an equilateral triangle on the bottom. I, if you only have three shelves, you can pick what arrangements you want to use of this. So he, go ahead. Okay, so here we have a perfect example of actually a couple of those. It's an X, but I'm also using that center one and I'm framing it. I'm framing the center focal point with my other shelves. So it, it, it that, like Sandra said, that could be a TV, that could be, you know, a piece of art. It could be anything, but it's your centerpiece 
and then you're uh, we've got pretty much black on all the four corners. We've got books on all four corners. And so we have created ourselves an X. Think triangle, narrow your focus, that inverse geometry and create platforms. Notice the horses that if she just put the horses, you know, are just the books then then that would not have been a right triangle. She had to get that the horses up there to get them taller. The book on this side, notice she's used a little platform to elevate the book and then to come down and bring it to a triangle. So it's a triangle on that side and it's actually could be a triangle on the other side if you came mm -hmm. from the book down to the to the center. Okay? All right, in module three, we get into some tips and tricks of creating a bookshelf. And uh, now this one was the backdrop was actually just two almost identical paintings or prints. And they were put in and created a very interesting backdrop. Now, Sandra also, what is that done right there? Do you see how Sandra's moving her uh, a cursor? there's our triangle now and let me say the more you now that you've kind of got these formulas in your mind you're going to start looking at bookcases differently i really wish this was a little bit bigger i you know the only reason that i don't totally the reason it made the cut let's say is because i thought it was so unique with the backdrop but also you can see the backdrop through here and that makes it interesting but technically I would have wanted this to be a little bit closer to make that triangle, mm -hmm. but it was still interesting in the way that um, she did the two pictures in the back. That was very unique. Yeah. Oh, Sandra, I, I love, I, love it. I really want you to explain. There are actually two of them here. So looking at the, the left, look real close. So now, now Sandra, <clears throat> explain it. You see, I can see it. Okay, I think Carol on the other it. side. So now, talk to us about that one. Okay, so you know we have had this huge trend of open concept spaces. Now that we are have been together so much, we are <laughs> we're wanting to have some dividers in our living spaces. But I thought this was so creative. Instead of just putting up a wall or having a bookcase, they took it all the way to the ceiling. This is actual wall and this is see-through. This allows this part, which is actually the wall, I mean, you know, see-through wall, that the light to come through. And notice how that it gives, um, uh, the ability to breathe. Now, when you have anything like this that is unusual, you need to be able to think logically. They are going, to, people are going to be walking on both sides of this. So I, whatever you put here has to be pretty on both sides. These were white wooden books. They were just blocks of wood made to kind of carve just a little bit to look like, you know, the top of the pages type thing. But it was all so interesting. It was functional. It was practical and it was very interesting. Um, the other thing it is, this was not planned. I can see how that's a little confusing because it's the same blue chair yeah, almost. It's like when, when I was looking at it today, I'm thinking, uh, okay, we need to separate those by just a tinge. <laughs> <laughs> but this goes back to architectural details. Both of these are good examples of that, but what a good choice of picture with the art, with the items that were placed. Um, notice the lighting. Um, again, color story. Mm, mm, okay, I'm not, you know, trying to be nice. Um, this could have made a much more of an impact with different color pillows. Um, but since we're talking bookcases, it was a good example of how to give a focal point and make these bookcases functional and interesting. And let me just point out, I did give credit because of the creativity. There is so many of these, like I said, that you could see that were magazines, decorating magazines. 
And um, they had a lot of good examples of what, you know, not to do. Okay, Sandra, you broke. No, no, uh, go ahead. I'm just, um, okay. I'm dismissing. I mean, I'm checking questions. Okay. I was going to say you, you stopped talking, but okay. So here we have next thing that's important in a bookcase is lighting. And we put this little LED, you know, light pack and these other things that you can get today. And there's no reason, even if there isn't electricity in the bookcase, that a bookcase has to be dark and dank. So, you know, there's lots of ways to add light to a bookcase. And here, I like the, the way it's shining down and creating actually a shape, you know, it almost mm -hmm. looks like a little cone in each one of those. And then the one over here, um, it's, it's creating just a great, with a, a, in a child's room. But if you didn't have a great looking lamp, you could have pulled those books forward, nushed that lamp to the background and still had your light in there. Okay, so some other book ideas is removing the jackets. Now, 20 years ago when I started, I removed the jacket because we wanted it to look like a library, a very you know, sophisticated book in a library. And so we took the covers off because the book itself was a stronger, you know, saturated color than the book jacket. Now then you can take that book jacket, turn it wrong side out. And now you get over here, these white books, which are very popular, but we also can put And I think we're going to show you, uh, hopefully we, st we still left it in there. But if it, even if the book is in not good shape, and here again, you're always going to check with your homeowner before, because it could be a 100 year old, <clears throat> you know, Sotheby's auction book for, for thousands of dollars before you rip the cover off. And, uh, but <laughs> if it's acceptable, then, you know, by just taking the cover off and tying it up with some raffia or string or yarn or something creates a very interesting, you know, system. Am I breaking up? Um, no, no, you're, you're doing okay right now. But this would be a good time since Carol has reminded us about that. Um, no matter what service you're offering. You're breaking up. Okay. No matter what service that you are offering, you are going to have insurance because you don't need that, you know, $1.5 million, you know, piece of art, you know, broken or something. Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. okay. So, but the last thing I want to say though, Sandra, go back on that one. Okay. Notice the bookcase at the bottom. You see how I have that little bit of extra edge right there? You want to pull your books out to the edge of the bookcase. Otherwise, it's too tempting to just, you know, put your keys, put your cell phone, and that becomes the just for now shelf. I'm just going to lay my keys here just for now. And the next thing you know, your bookshelf is deteriorated into a clutter. Um, but if you bring them out to the edge of the of the uh, bookcase, then they they can't aren't tempted to put extra stuff on it. Good point. Just for now, maybe two years. Yeah, for sure. Okay, Sandra, go ahead. Punctuate our book stacks. So yeah, this is just an easy tip, and you may be doing this and and haven't really thought about it. You know, we're just putting something on top of of the books, but having that punctuation, and that's just kind of what we're referring to it as is a way to add interest because you've given that platform with the books. This um, punctuation element uh, sitting on the fabric book is a little big, but it's okay because of its see-through ability. You know, it's got air going through it, but just being able to punctuate the books, have books going in different directions, vertical and horizontally, even flipping them around, like we've talked about, see, this is an example. I tend to want the whole section going the same direction versus this one in the middle. Um, but 
this would be one way and now we would have it in the opposite direction over here. And then last but not least, having something besides our, you know, a bookend, something that is serving an interesting object, serving as the bookend um, makes that really interesting. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example. This is a client. And, you know, if you have had our class, you know about the power words. So we use the power words for our bookcase clients also. And in this case, this was an interesting job because this client wanted feminine, as you see, she marked feminine. She also marked masculine and memorable. That was like, okay, well, <laughs> let's talk about this. And the reason that this bookcase became more important is because let's face it, COVID, and we are Zoom calling and we need backdrops that line up with whoever is, you know, holding the Zoom call. So the wife in the house needed to have something that was feminine. And I will tell you, this bookcase was incredibly feminine, as you could see from the office chair that is in the space. But now her husband needs to use it too. But this was also where they put memorable items, you know, the engagement photo and um, things, you know, from, you know, their first house photo. So these were the three most important power words. And this was the bookshelf. And this is what we're talking about. We've got this lovely, you know, brown bookcase. Um, did not necessarily want to paint it. Um, open to it, but it was one of those things. I said, let's layer the decision. You could tell they were hyperventilating, thinking they had to do this. So this is what we ended up with. I'm just going to go to the end result so you can see it. So this row definitely had a little bit more of a feminine feel. The printer is down here because it needs to still be functional. Um, limited the amount of color repeat of this fuchsia color um, because we did need it to feel masculine too, but we let the, this color float on the two ends. So this now provided the wife, she could sit in front of that and hold her Zoom calls. The husband now, and you see that we framed this, we gave this frame effect. Um, it, he got a little bit more of a masculine geometric grouping of art. And we started this whole project, guys, with peel and stick wallpaper. We decided two days before, let's try the peel and stick wallpaper if you don't want to paint it yet. Um, cost $15, three rolls, and we had some left over. Um, so again, just moving shelves out. And then this became their memorable section. They still got their, you know, um, engagement picture, their first house, some of these fun um, sculptural elements. Notice the triangle, what we're doing here. We got a triangle going. Um, we still truly gave them everything they wanted, still had their function down here. But those functional pieces did not stay in the, um, picture when they're doing Zoom. Okay, so we're, this is module four, just to give you a taste of what happens here. This is where, um, <clears throat> oh, that's a good point, Elizabeth, that um, she's talking about the lighting before. The stick up light would be a great piece, uh, a great on a nice piece of art. And again, that's where you get that light effect um, bring it in without having, oops, excuse me, without having to do um, even a piece right there. And that would make this metallic also work to have that reflective value. That, that's mm -hmm. a great point. Great point. Yeah, that um, is. Yeah. Um, okay, so now let's talk about bookcase studies. So this was just a, two great examples. This is um, shape overload. You want to avoid all of that, the accessory on parade. I mean, this was a, must have been a bargain on this base, or who knows, it could be a very valuable collection. But you can see if you do nothing but just glance at that, close your eyes and open it. It's like, I have nothing that says, look at me as much as I just don't know where to light. My eye doesn't know where to light. What it but, says is, ooh, look at me. <laughs> It doesn't say, oh, look at me. It just says, look at me. Oh. Yeah. 
so and again it's like paperback city here but but it's a great architectural feature it is really pretty they even have lights you see the um, lighting effect up here um but the contrast is you come over here and again this is less is more and we get that it is um showy show worthy over here but it i love the way that the style of the room is translated into the bookshelf i love the organic feel here you know the carving in um, some of the elements here but this is just a really nice nicely done um, and when you start to start criticizing and i mean that you know as nice as it can sound <laughs> um, you start to learn so now in this bookcase this homeowner uh this was a bookcase done for class this homeowner had had a really really tough year and this was her home and these were her bookcases and they were just sort of um accessories on parade you know uh the television was too small she just needed something fresh well all of her girlfriends came in and they did the painting and we had found this gorgeous you can tell it was a couple of years ago when these big colorful rugs were very big but uh, we found this beautiful color, co uh, colorful rug, and they did the backs of her bookcases to bring that blue out, and it just came alive, and it was it made such a, a difference in her bookcase. So uh, we're just analyzing accessories on parade and putting things together, creating our triangles, and uh, so it nice one fourth space. Look, look how nice this triangle is here. Look how nice, I mean, see how we have the triangle going right here? Carol, very good job. Love it, love it. <laughs> uh, we may have lost Carol, let me see. Um, I'm here. Oh, there you are, you okay. Now I can. Okay. All right, go. Okay, now this is a bookcase. <clears throat> this is in a million dollar house. It was a gentleman. And I was asked to do this bookcase and notice the floor, notice the chairs, notice <laughs> I literally found a little spot to stand. And I went to pull the book books out of the bookcase and turned around and went, I'll just put them right, uh, I'll put them right over. Uh, I ended up holding them in my arms while I tried to find and I just began to work that shelf and rework it. A lot of paperbacks. You notice he has a lot of those just for now shelves. Look, they all have a just for now <laughs> placement. And so I stood there for about eight hours and worked and reworked this shelf. And I was able to come up with the next slide. Can you move us forward, Sandra? Okay. Uh, we um, we're moved forward. Well, she's frozen. Oh. <laughs> can you move it forward, Sandra? Um, let's see. Okay. Can you? I'm going to ask the group. Um, can you guys see us? Uh, can you see the screen? Let me see. Hold on, Carol. Let me see. Yes, they can see the screen. So just talk it. Okay, I am going to, Carol, are you there? Okay, I'm back. Okay, <laughs> there you go. They can see the screen. Okay, so now uh, I reworked it. All of the, okay. okay, all of the paperbacks are still on that bookcase. They are behind the hardbacks so i mean nobody's ever going to go back and read them again i feel confident but there's something about knowing it's all in there they're all, all there so i did virtually no shopping except if you'll notice sandra show the five the boxes the black boxes uh, sitting in the bookcase can you show us that i am they're they're seeing them except so okay the black boxes uh that was to put 
you know, all of the remotes, all of the uh, sunglasses, all the Chotsky things that were too, and then this this hexagon uh, box over here held all the papers. There were papers stacked everywhere. So that one took me about eight hours to complete, but guess what? I, I'll do that for a thousand dollars every day. How about you? <laughs> Absolutely. So, Absolutely. That is a really good idea with the paperbacks because it's almost easier to think, how can I hide them on the shelf than it is to where am I going to put them knowing how it looked before. And notice everybody how Carol um, stacked the shelf she removed right here. They're stacked right there. Um, mm -hmm. So that you don't have to now try and figure out a place because based and on that, two pop-up lights I've illuminated the flag and I've illuminated a, like a little um I also went out and bought a, an animal skin rug to put down it, it turned out really nice he was very very happy and she made a thousand dollars and okay. I was very very happy <laughs> <laughs> um so next we're going to talk about bookcases I mean, business in the business of bookcases. And this goes back to why do we do any of this stuff that we do? You know, if this is just, you wanna find out about bookcases for yourself, or if you wanna stick your toe in the decorating world, um, if you wanna add this service, because let's face it, it looks impressive having this certification um, behind your name with the others. Um, we even have we talked about this just even teaming up that kindred spirit working together with somebody that, you know, uh, let's say Elizabeth's business is so busy right now, she doesn't have time to style a bookcase. It would be nice to have the certified bookcase specialist come in and do that part of the job, especially if you have something like we just had in that last slide. Um, but yeah, it's, it's one of those really amazing ways for us to be creative. And I'm just going to keep going really fast through here, Carol, because we're at six. You want to talk about this one? Sure. Okay. Uh, so, well, let's talk a little bit about pricing this. You know, I told you I worked for eight hours on that. And so I was obviously charging my hourly rate on that particular one. And, but let's uh, look at some of the things that you can do. If, you know, you can do a flat fee. A lot of people like a flat fee. It, you know, so my consultation is always $150. I don't make any exceptions. My shopping is always $150. If I build a, a design board, that's going to be $150. And a bookcase is $500, $400, whatever you want to charge for a bookcase. So they can add all those up and that's their flat fee. Okay. Or I can go by the hour. My shopping, you know, over here, my shopping was $150 or whatever. I've estimated what I think it's going to be. So I've told them $150. Over here, I'm shopping by the hour. So I may shop for one hour or three hours. At three hours, I'm now looking at $450. My consulting can go anywhere from $100 to $250. And then my installation is going to be $75 to $150 an hour. Now, I'm giving you numbers in general. You're going to if I were putting together bookcases in New York City or Los Angeles, California, also, if it's a very large bookcase, I can say, Helen, I'll do your bookcase for $700. And in that $700 is included the consultation, any shopping I may do, any board I may do, start to finish. So you can see how if they do it a la carte over here, they can do 150 and then another 150 and not, or it's going to be three to seven hundred dollars. And a small bookcase can be three to five hundred, or if they have multiple bookcases. So we're just trying to give you a little bit of um, you know idea of how you can approach this, and uh, so we're excited about that. It can also open the door to so much more. Those of you that are just tipping your foot in the toe in the water and you're a little nervous about jumping in full speed, this can be so much more. So look at this as a open door 
set up. So you have a lot of different revenue streams. I don't, we don't need there to read that. You, that you guys are all familiar with these pretty much, but we just, it's a nice reminder of how you can add to them. Um, here's additional certifications you may want to add. We, because we're talking bookcases tonight, we really did want you to also be aware of NAPO. Um, we don't teach an organizing class, but when you start to look at these bookcases and, and the need for some of them to function in offices, having that organizational skill could be really important. And also the downsizing of the senior move managers. That's another, um, that might be somebody that, or you might even want to add this to yours, but it's something that you could see that would line up in this part of, you know, this service. Commercial projects, bookcases are everywhere in commercial projects. I did a nail salon one time and that was very creative because I had a, <laughs> my fourth pie shaped um, having, you know, I had lost Sanders, if you can hear me. Go ahead, um, I, Sandra. I can hear you. So um, there were a lot of little elements. So it was how to be creative with a gazillion nail polishes. Um, be sure and keep this smart inventory. We want you to have a line of each of these. Um, these uh, you can order books that have shapes on them. It can go over multiple shape, um, excuse me, shelves. It can have a scene that can also stretch out over you know four or five shelves you get to dictate what you want it to be and how big you know top to bottom left to right that you want it to be so let's just cover i know i'm going fast i just want to make sure i honor everybody's time so how long will it take you this is one of those questions that you can't possibly guess because you have not seen the job yet you know, oh my gosh, I have these amazing formulas that I could implement, but it's really impossible for me to give you and, you know, pick one of your pricing elements that we just went over until you've seen the job. I love it when the homeowner really wants to help us. Can I help you? Um, <laughs> um, listen, be ready. You can't tell a homeowner not to be in the house and watch you or if they want to offer you help but it won't take her very long to realize that you're moving at a really different pace than she is. Um, and quite honestly, like Carol showed you in that room, most of the time there's not room for you to move around, much less if somebody else is there. Um, do I have to pay sales tax? Absolutely, you do. Um, and that, I didn't hear your last question. I, can I help you? You're can breaking I, up. Okay. Um, I don't okay, know can I? Can I help you? I, I did have a woman that said, can I help you? And I said, you know, you go on about your day. I like for it to be a surprise. But she said, I just like to watch. I love HG. Okay, I can definitely tell Carol is gone now because I can't see her. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> Okay, so let's just get this so we can make sure we give them the um, their their bonus for being right, here. Right, right. We want to give you your bonus. And so I said, talked to myself and I said, I need a blue bowl. Next thing I knew, I had 12 blue bowls laying at my feet. So if I if you can get them to go on about their day, that's great. And, you know, what if I don't like it? You know, that comes in as as, you know, you live with it for a week. If you don't love it after a week, I'll come back and tweak it. But and I will say it's never happened. Gosh, it's never happened. You know, as long as we're oh, and it's never happened. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, okay. So how much will so it cost? We, we, you know, these are some questions you might need to have yourself a hand answer. Okay. Okay. So I, we're just going to talk marketing, just everything you do, you want to brand and let them know that you do books. And this is such a unique um, service. Not everybody, like we said, can do bookcases. We want you, your print and social media to be, you know, worthy. I love these different ideas. I'm worried your bookcase looks like mom's, you know, call a certified bookcase specialist. So be consistent with whatever you're printing out there. And these are just a few little teaser marketings. You know, there's that does your bookcase look like grandma's what to do with all these books uh 
Does your bookcase show the age of your home? Has your bookcase become just a catch-all? So these are just some teasing marketing ideas that if you could go into Canva, create something, put it up on Facebook, and you got yourself a little commercial going. <laughs> the other thing you want to do is drip on people. And that means, why don't you send your old clients, um, every time you do a bookcase, just wanted to show you the bookcase I did this last week. Does yours look like this? Do you wish it looked more like this? So that's to friends and families do workshops on this stuff and speaking engagement. So all of this is great way to market your business. And listen, we're preaching to the choir because you guys are obviously connected and staying almost current. there, guys. Um, OK, so let's here's just some tools of the trade in the class. We just cover everything you could possibly need for a bookcase and how to pack your bookcase. So here is our special for you tonight. This certified class is $259 um, and we are giving you $100 off if you're interested. The code is we love books. Um, and if you haven't ordered anything on the online um, platform, um, you just go to the Decorating and Staging Academy and then you click on the bookcase specialist under learn and it'll take you right to it. Okay, I think you're breaking up, Sandra. Um, so anyway, and I, you know what I'll do is I'm going to show you real quick. Hold on, hold on. And let me just show you, um, just a second. Uh Oh, can you see me? Are you there, Sandra? Yes, we're here. Hold on just a minute. Just a second. Um, I am. Okay, I'm, I'm holding on. Okay, hold on. You, if you got to just, the screen's cha changed. Um, okay. Okay, so, so under go learn. down there to learn. Okay, and, it, and here's learn. your bookcase. Here's your bookcase specialist right here. And you can click through, or you can just go right here to on-demand learning. And it's right here. You have to put it in the cart. And when it asks you for a code, you're going to put in We Love Books. I'll go back to that one just so you can see it. Oops, not that one. Okay. All right. Um, just one second. You're going to go. Mm -mm. Nope. Hold on. We love books <laughs> is what you're going to put it in. <laughs> Here we go. We love books. Thank you guys. I'm sorry we had this little breakup with this sound a little bit, but it is recorded and hopefully you'll all be able to hear it. And let me just look at these last questions. Yeah, we um, have a couple of little questions down here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, I think that's good. They were just letting me know um, that they could hear me. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Um, it, as always, we're here. If you have any questions, you can email us. Um, I think I've answered, um, I think we've got everything. Um, uh, where do we buy books to stock? Great question, Jan. It is called Books by the Foot. I literally do go to my thrift shops. I love, I still love Reader's Digest because they're very sturdy. Uh, you can go to Restore, but if you want to buy the, the book, oh, Books by the Foot is one option. The books that you saw um, in that were for market, Paragon has them. Um, and there's one other place um, in it. I'll have to look, I'll put it, um, I'll shoot you a text, let me see. Um, okay, this was fabulous. Thank you so much for putting it together. It's every Tuesday, um, the last Tuesday of the month, and the topics vary greatly. Next week, um, I mean, excuse me, next month, I think it's on staging next month. So, um, okay, thank you, Jenny. Um, feel free to call us if you have any questions. Thank you, guys. Bye, guys. Bye, Roseanne.